you come to the office of government and they have who is the president and also the age of the presidency, you see people that are following the president, any man that is delegated by the presidency to go and represent the, the president for any matter, maybe uh, uh, official matter or any matter at all, that person comes with what's called the authority of the president. And whatever that person says, the president can be held accountable for what his aide has said. And what does that mean? That means that as you are here this morning and the Lord has mandated the major prophet of God to prophesy, to declare, and to also pray for you and bring an answer to all your prayer. Anything that comes out of my mouth, you can hold God accountable for that because God will make it happen. Amen. God will make it happen for you. Amen. There is a special design in the realm of the spirit to bring about the answer to everything you have prayed this year. Amen. Amen. Why? Because our God is not constrained, our God does not have limit, our God does not have impossibility in his life when you see impossibility impossibility only dwell with human impossibility does not dwell with God because God is the commander in chief of the whole universe whatever he says will surely be so he's saying this morning that all the prayer you prayed from the beginning of this fasting and prayer God said I shall tell you they are all already answered amen now, it is important that we believe what God has said to us. Many people say, oh, when did God say it? As long as it's coming from the mouth of a servant of God that God has approved to prophesy, to speak on his behalf, it is God that is saying it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Many of you don't know, but I want to draw your attention to what happened in the Bible about the prophet called the prophet Ezekiel. Prophet Ezekiel was taken in the spirit by the spirit of God to the valley of dry bones. And when God showed him dry bones, God asked him a question. He said, son of man, shall this bone live again? Do you know what happened? The prophet threw it back to God. He said, God, thou knowest. Amen. Amen, somebody. He threw it back to God and said, God, thou knowest whether the dry bone will live again or not live again. And what happened? God said, prophesy to the dry bone and tell the dry bone that the dry bone should live again. Hallelujah. Amen. Your life may as well be the dry bone. You may as well have prayed for so many things. But as far as today is concerned, everything you pray for, God will surprise you. Amen. The answer will enter your hand. Amen. Whether the devil like it or not, I don't care what the devil is saying or what the devil has to offer. All I know is that the answer will enter your heart. Amen. The answer will enter your heart. Amen. The answer will enter your heart. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Because the God we serve has all it takes to put the answer in your hand. You know, when you send somebody on errand, if you send somebody, oh, you God, help me go, go to that place. There's a, 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 a man there. Push the man or jack the man and throw him away. First of all, the person you are sending the message will look at you. You say, sir, you say, I say, go there. You see a man standing there. Jack the person and throw him away. Sir, what? Eh? Go there and do what I ask you to do. You know why he's asking you a question? He's looking at you. You that's should go and throw somebody away. If the person slap me, what will you do? If the person I want to throw away, uh, if I get there and the person is stronger than me, what else can be done? And if you don't carry the authority and the power and what it takes for the person to build confidence and go and do what you ask him to do, he will never do it because he wants to put himself in trouble. Amen? Amen? Amen. He wouldn't want to put himself in trouble. But if the person look at you and he say, ah, my yoga is everything. Whatever yoga tells me. When he gets there, he doesn't even mind to use leg and kick the person away. Because anything that comes up, you that send him will come out. Amen? If you send somebody on errand to go and do something, and uh, the person sees that even when the thing changes, even you yourself is in trouble, 
he will never try it. Eh? You are sending me something. When the trouble comes now, now me and you go suffer them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, God, with all the authority of heaven, with all the power in heaven and the grace that is available on Mount of Possibility and the grace he has already commanded in this ministry, God has answered your prayers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number one, we go to the Bible and see the book of, we're going to read from the book of Exodus chapter 32. I know that your heart is made up this morning for what God has promised you. Your heart is made up to receive an answer. The answer will come in Jesus' name. I said the answer will come in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to read from verse number 7. From verse number 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt. Have them corrupt themselves? They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have met them in molten cows and have worshipped it. And have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen his people, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff naked people, naked people. Now therefore let my alone, that my rod may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought his God, and said, Lord, why do it thy rod was hot against thy people, which thou broughtest forth out of the land of Egypt, which great power and which a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Thorn from thy first rod and repent of this evil against thy people. And he went ahead and said, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob thy servant, to them whom thou answerest by thy own self, and said that unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all the land that I have spoken will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. 14. And the Lord repented of the evils which he brought to do unto his people. And Moses turned again and went down from the mountain. And the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. Now praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The Israelites in this very contest know that somebody brought them out of the land of captivity. They knew that somebody brought them out of the land of captivity. But what they don't know is how this God looked like. What they don't know is the full detail of who this God is. And what happened? The people decided to wait for Moses and Moses was not available. What they did was to go and carve something and say, this is the God that brought us out of the land of captivity. And this alone brought anger. And when the anger kindled, Moses now reminded God of his power and how he is able to answer prayer. And God look at the situation and God say, yeah, my son, you are saying the reality. What you are saying of what people will say is a reality. So I have changed from destroying the people. I will now answer them and bless them. And what happened in that case? That was when God now released Moses with the tablet of testimony. Now look at the problem in the world today and what is happening to many people has kindled the wrath of God on the face of the earth. If you look at the world today, you see many people are crying here and there. Many things are happening here and there. And why is this is happening? They are happening because the world has changed. They are focused on their self-desires and they are forgotten about God. But it takes few people, and that few people are you and I. And that few people that are you and I 
we are the people that every prayer we have prayed, God will surely answer it. Amen. Your amen is small to that. Amen. I say your own is small to that. Amen. Now, what does this bring us to know? This brought us to know that all the shortcomings, God knows. This made us to know that all the ways where we normally fail and the things we have not met up with, God is aware of them all. Your inability, your lack of strength, your lack of wisdom, the ability to make something happen, even in business, the things you don't know how to make your business prosper, all that you know about and what you don't know that will make you to grow. God knows all those weaknesses. And if God knows all those weaknesses, and God has instructed you to go and pray, the essence of that prayer means that God has used that prayer to help your unbelief and help your strength and correct the things that have already gone wrong in your life. And that means if God finished correcting everything, just as we are rounding up today, it is now the next phase. And that phase is the phase of opening the tablet of testimony for you. Amen. The tablet of testimony will open for you. Amen. Whether the devil like it or not, the Lord will open the tablet of testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because you have wandered away enough. You have struggled enough. You have also toiled enough. You have also just shadow enough. The time for the real deal is today. I said the time for the real deal is today. Amen. Today will never pass you by and God will perfect all the plans in your life. Amen. God will perfect all the plans in your life. Amen. God will perfect all his plans in your life. Amen. For you will surely receive an answer that will settle you forever. Amen. Tell your neighbor I am settled. Say neighbor. I am settled already in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say, neighbor, I am settled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the book of Isaiah 59. Open your Bible quickly. Isaiah 59. Open quickly. Isaiah 59. Look at verse 1. I'm reading it to 3. And it said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muted perverseness. None called for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity and they speak lies and they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. The Lord also continue on what is happening on the face of the earth. That now made God to now begin to explain his position. Many people will say God is not answering prayer, but you don't know that one way or the other, the enemy may have somehow, somewhere foiled your hand. Somehow, somewhere put a stumbling block that has meant something to be holding against you. But for the fact that instruction is given, and that instruction is the instruction to seek the face of God and to pray to God, Whatever mischief it may be, whatever covenant of failure it may be, whatever thing hanging against you, the Lord has already broken them this morning. Amen. If you shout amen, that means you believe what I'm saying. Amen. You better shout a louder amen. Amen. Because the Lord is using this service to settle your life. Let your life be settled though. I said, let your life be settled in the name of Jesus. And then he went ahead and said, the hand of the Lord is not shortened. Now, the Lord is talking about here is our God. Our God does not have what he will say. Oh, if not because of this, I will not do this. Oh, this is my problem. My problem is that my hand is short. 
God can never say, my problem is that my ear, I know they hear well. This left side, I cannot hear. And when you are speaking here, I cannot hear. I have to turn here. Because I did not turn here, that's why I did not answer you, no. And also, God is not blind that he will say, I did not see what you are passing through. Or that he will say he has not seen your prayer. Before you open your mouth to pray, God already know what you are praying for. Before you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, this month, this year, I am praying for this, I am praying for that. Before you open that mouth to pray, God already know what is in your heart. And that is why he's explaining to you who he is. He's aware of everything about your life. He's aware of the family you are born into. How the foundation of your family may have a somehow idol worshipping family. How the foundation of where you are doing your business may have been constructed under blood. How whatever, whatever that the enemy is presenting, God knows all of them. And if God knows them, and God is here giving me a ticket and giving me an order, authority to say, to proclaim, to declare what will come to pass, I said congratulations to you because the matter has been settled already. Amen. The matter that would have drawn you back in 2023 has been settled already. Amen. And this 2023 will never be the year of struggling for you. Amen. The devil cannot draw you back. Amen. He cannot take you back. Amen. He will only move forward ever. Amen. And backward never. Amen. Forward ever. Amen. Backward never. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen.